one. Great pleasure to be to be back here after uh, after all these uh, great presenters. Um, I got chance to with Moria and Art and Annie last year to talk a little bit about AI and KM and how um, AI was also supporting creativity and creativity has been a, a passion for me or a great interest over the, the past year. So I'm glad to be back and share a little bit with you more about how creativity can play a role in knowledge management. So I will not just talk about creativity in general, uh, just focus really on how creativity can play a role uh, in knowledge management. And hopefully uh, this will lead to, to some new ideas or new ways that are looking at, at KM. So I have a lot to, to cover today as always. Uh, those who know me, I try to uh, cover uh, 150 slides in, um, <laughs> in one hour. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, there are some slides where I will go rapidly because there is no much. I mean, this might be things you might be aware of and also you might be able to come back on your own later on with a, the with a slide. So I, I will touch really on uh, three main um, aspects today. The first one is uh, why creativity matters and why does it matter in, in our current context? Uh, why do we have creativity as part of this important skill for, for knowledge workers? How creativity can support KM and how KM can support creativity. So we can see also uh, the implication on both sides because I value, I mean, I believe that both can support each other's like we could see with KM and AI. KM could support AI and AI could support also KM. So these are the main three topic I will touch upon during this presentation. So let me first start by, uh, by a definition of, uh, of creativity. So a definition which is quite simple, but that I like because it's straight to the point. So the ability to come up with ideas or artifacts that are new, surprising, and also valuable. Okay, so it needs to meet these three criteria to be considered as creative. So something new, Something which is surprising, we say, wow, oh, I never thought about this. Oh, that's, that's quite, quite, quite interesting. But also that has some value. So that brings some benefit to, to some extent. Okay, so let's try to keep this definition in our mind along the, the, the presentation today. And sometime I will come back, come back to it. Now, creativity for a long time uh, has been studied and uh, has been the interest at the individual level. We were looking at understanding how people can be more creative, why some people were much more creative than others, geniuses and, and, and so on. And uh, over the past, past decade, I will say, the shift has been moving towards team creativity. So we, we know that things are becoming more and more complex and um, it's, it's very unlikely that one single individual uh, could find solution to, to the complex challenge that we are facing. So team creativity is, is currently a hot topic in, in the field of creativity. And, and, um, and that has also different challenges, knowing that team creativity is much more than uh, the sum of the individual creativity or, or the individual um, members in, in the team. And then we talk also about organizational creativity, how an organization as a whole can be creative. We talk about creative economies also. So, I mean, we can look at it through, through different lens. Uh, today, we'll, I mean, in this presentation, we'll talk mainly about uh, team and individual creativity and also KM in the context of, uh, of creativity. So why creativity matters? Why do we talk so much these days about creativity? Uh, first of all, because we are in this running in this VUCA world, so I will not go back and explaining. I think many speakers have already talk, talked about it, but things are, are, are changing very fast. Uh, things are becoming much more un uncertain and, uh, and, and, and things are becoming more and more complex and challenges are more complex and that will require of course, much more novelty to solve them. So almost every industry uh, is being disrupted. Uh, in higher education, we are disrupted. Uh, government are disrupted. Everyone more or less is disrupted in, 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 at a different level uh, and, and at a at slower or faster pace, but disruption is, is everywhere around, around us. So organizations of any type uh, who are not, uh, just one second, I'm trying to, to hide my, okay, here we go. 
um, organizations that cannot innovate, uh, I mean, very rapidly uh, disappear. And, and, and I mean, we know that a lot of uh, yeah, Fortune, uh, even 500 or companies that were here 10 or 20 years ago, a lot of them have currently disappeared. So at the end of the day, so uh, as Einstein said, we cannot solve our problem with the same thinking we, we used when we created them. So we need to think differently if we want to address all these challenges and uh, all these sudden challenges that we are currently faced with. So this applies to sustainability. And so you all heard about these uh, uh, 17 SDGs. So how how do we also address them and how do organizations or citizens address them? But this could be also really about any kind of challenges that you are facing in your work environment. So we always say you need to think outside the box. So I've, I've tried once and uh, I succeeded to some, to some extent, but uh, it's really trying to think differently and trying to find new solutions. So uh, the World Economic Forum uh, listed some of the top skills that would be required for employer in, in the future or for employees in the future. And if we just look focus on the blue one, so the blue one focus on problem solving. We can say analytical thinking and innovation, complex problem solving, critical thinking and analysis, creativity, originality and initiatives. So there's a lot of overlap between this term and at the bottom reasoning, problem solving and ideation. So we can see that yes, creativity is part of all of this uh, concept. Last week we had Saleh uh, or two weeks ago, Saleh, we talked about uh, uh, critical thinking. Last week um, we had also a, a presentation um, of Vadim and Olga on um, Strategic thinking. Strategy so, thinking. yeah, strategy thinking. Thank you. So, uh, I mean, all these uh, different pieces come together and contribute to this. But really, the ability to be able to uh, look at problems differently and find novel solutions to address them is uh, is becoming one of the top skills that we expect from employees and, of course, from uh, from knowledge workers. So, even if you look at uh, education and uh, there is this model of uh, education of the 21st century. There is a focus on what we call the 4C, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. So it's, it's everywhere, and there are good reasons why it's everywhere, because there is, uh, we are faced with, with challenges. So now there is this myth about this creativity that, well, some people are born creative, or I'm not creative. And uh, so we perceive ourselves more or less creative, and, and, and this inhibit our ability uh, really to, to, to try new things or to go outside of our comfort zone uh, to try new things. So uh, in fact, so we are not born creative. Uh, I mean, that's a skill that we can develop and that's why we are here today also to talk about it. Now, we all, all seen, I mean, those of you who have children or remember when you were a child, I mean, we are much more creative when we were children than we are, than we are now. It looks like the older we get, uh, the less creative we are, or, or, or the less risk we are taking to be creative. So I like this quote that we don't stop playing because we grow old, we grow old because we stop playing. So this playfulness is also part of, of creativity. And uh, I mean, we'll talk more about this later on, but uh, we need to somehow find ways to bring back this playfulness in the way we do things, in the way we experiment things. And we have also this, uh, this, I mean, this new threat about machine becoming more and more intelligent and being able to automate a lot of tasks that, that we do or a large part of the tasks that we do. And, uh, and yes, I mean, creative thinking or critical thinking, creativity are some of the tasks that machines, I mean, are slowly getting at, but we are still way ahead of them. So that's also might be one of the reasons why, uh, I mean, investing or, or, or trying to, uh, to work in this environment where creativity can play a role uh, will make a difference. So before we really, really get into this, this was just a, a quick introduction. Before we really get into this, uh, this discussion about KM and creativity, we're going to start just to, to get you think a little bit about it. So I would like you to think about how knowledge management could contribute to creativity 
And how do you think creativity could contribute to knowledge management? Okay, so you're gonna be uh, split by in teams in these uh, breakup rooms and you will have two main questions. Uh, how, does, how do you think knowledge management can contribute to creativity? And how do you think that creativity can contribute to knowledge management? Okay, um, Moria, do you have the uh, Anat? The link. We, we work here together. Okay. Anat is uh, working with me. Anat, can link I... is here in the chat. Oh, I can open it. Okay, I'll open the. Uh, you put the link, and I'll open the room. Just a minute. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So have a good discussion. Vincent, do you want to go into the rooms and see what people are doing? Yes, I'm doing it. Yes, I have it on the screen. Yes, yeah, I can see it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Right.
Thanks for three more minutes. Three more minutes, okay. No, you decide how much time. Ah, okay. It's, it's I, I thought, show. Yeah, let's give them three more minutes, yes. Okay. I'll close all rooms. Okay. For well, those who joined uh, late, I'm not really sending them out to new rooms. Okay. It will be 60 seconds until everyone returns. Okay. As you, of course, know. Okay, everyone's back in recording. Okay, welcome back. Great, so I rapidly uh, visit. Okay, welcome back. I rapidly went through the through the different rooms. So yes, a lots of uh, uh, very uh, interesting ideas. Um, just let me skim through them rapidly. So just taking some of them. Uh, um, so how does uh, how do you think creativity can help KM faster the way to do uh, to do KM uh, to find new ways on how we can use KM in different ways to create more value. Uh, for curating and harvesting knowledge of employees, um, to present knowledge in a different format to support creativity. Um, what else do we have? Um, can help with cultural change, better ways to organize knowledge for end users, uh, enable to foster a new mindset, enable to, um, oops, sorry, enable to expand the scope of KM. What else do we have? use the right channel for communication, uh, finding creative ways how to receive feedback, information, and knowledge, uh, being creative in reaching to new, new audiences. So you really have, uh, it's about communication, it's about technique, it's about the type of knowledge, it's about being more playful, so people want to use it. Great, so you looks like you have been very, very productive. So I, I will not go through all of them in, in detail, but I, I encourage you, uh, to, to have a look at them because there was a lot of uh, very, very good uh, ideas and very good insights. Great, so this was to warm you up a little bit on this topic. Now, let me uh, give you, uh, share with you some of uh, ideas on how I think they could connect with each other. Let me just hide the floating things. Here we go. Okay, so let's look at how creativity can support care. Uh, 
Now there has been I, I discovered recently this uh, uh, this report that was published by Deloitte last year uh, that talks about the new knowledge management. So uh, there is a, a full report that you can download, uh, which is free. And uh, at the end, they, they come up with three main recommendations uh, to look at the new, what they call the new KM. So first, to create a, a new mindset, again, create an environment where people feel uh, comfortable, so where there is some... Uh, uh, psychological safety and, and so on, where people feel uh, open to, to share. Well, that's quite, quite known. And, uh, but uh, recommendation number two was, was interesting. Knowledge management has left the cornerstone of the past two decades behind. It is no longer about knowledge capture and the perfect file structure. It is not even about knowledge management. And it's not even about management any longer, sorry. Knowledge today is about creating additional value. It is, and it is the backbone of the remote and hybrid work models that will define the 2020s. Sharing, transferring, and adding knowledge will be part of the daily life of each employee. Making knowledge transfer a priority will improve an organization knowledge flows and the enhanced value of information would justify investment in knowledge management repository system. So, well, there is much more detail in the, in the report, but what they really focus on is say, okay, uh, I think just trying to capture and to store all, all this, this knowledge at a, at a time, it has a value, but we need to move, uh, move forward and, and find ways to uh, focus much more, for instance, on knowledge creation, which has been ignored for a long, long time in the field of knowledge management and, and, and look more about how do we get this knowledge to flow in the organization. Even so, it has always been, I mean, one of the core reasons for, for knowledge management to exist. And they give three main uh, recommendations or questions that organizations could ask, ask themselves. How can employees gain knowledge more rapidly? How can organizations be quicker to build new capabilities for increasing complex problem and how can the organization collective intelligence be being used so i mean these are some of the questions that they raised and, and where again knowledge management could for sure contribute as an important role to play but maybe not the traditional knowledge management and, and that's where i believe creativity can play a role to to somehow bring some new lights or some new vision about how KM could be done. So I believe there needs to be a change. We have been, I mean, the way that knowledge management has been run for lots of organizations over the past 20 years has not changed very much. Uh, I mean, the same practices that existed more or less uh, 20 years ago, some of them are still around, some of there have been some new ones, but we have not seen much, much really uh, changes. Of course, the new technologies have appeared as an enablers, but we, we don't see really some, some big changes into how knowledge management is done. And I like this, this cycle, and I've, some of you who have known me for a long time may have, may have seen it also before, but we have a tendency just even talking about knowledge management and, okay, we have some, some routine of things we, we, we try to do, we try to promote. So these things work, don't work. We, we, uh, we refine them, we improve them slowly uh, just to make them to work. But... So it's what I could call continuous improvement in, in problem solving. But we rarely really go to, in, towards the innovation cycle where we really challenge or question the way we do things and, and really look at, uh, at things differently. How could knowledge management could be done differently? And how could we somehow innovate in this knowledge management field itself? So uh, we just, don't focus on the production engine, making it work, but also we combine it with what is called the innovation engine. So it's a, I will make a bit the analogy with what we call this simple loop and double loop learning. So simple loop learning that you have a problem, well, uh, we, we try something, it, it leads to an output. So if this output is, is not exactly what we expected, then we refine uh, what we are doing and until we reach our objective. Now, if we look at do, double loop learning, is that we go one step further, we question, I mean, why do we do the thing we do this particular hey, good way? Good morning. Um, 
Doing okay. Oops. I'm still at my farm and I really hurt you myself on Sunday. Today, so I've been kind of slow to get up today. I apologize for being late. Um, I'm trying to mute the, um, you, but I cannot. The yes. challenge I'm having right now is that <laughs> Pakistan is uh, adding a, a double, they're double checking people that mm -hmm. shouldn't be double checked. Mm -hmm. or, it's okay, so it's okay. Oh, no, no, I, I cannot mute. Uh, three That's funny. Yeah, this is an HVT that I've been to last yeah, week. Okay. Um, they want now for he, he, his wife, and his mother an extra $950 to look at their visa process again. So, the, what they're doing is they're. Maybe it's eight. Okay. Vince, please turn on your mic. Wow. We do awesome. not still hear you. Vincent, please turn on your mic. Yeah. He's trying. Sorry, I had removed the, the panel bar so I could not find the unmute button too. Okay. Um, here we go again. Sorry, I had to kick. Uh, Okay, don't report. Okay, here we go. So sorry about this. So the double loop learning is really questioning, I mean, why we do the things uh, we do in that particular way. And, and I think that's where also we could question uh, how we do knowledge management and are there potentially other ways or better ways uh, to, to get knowledge, to, um, uh, to manage knowledge in organizations. So that's a bit, uh, I made this analogy over here. Well, simple loop learning, we are just trying to solve, okay, what's working, what's not working, but we are not questioning really at the core why we are doing things that way, why we are doing knowledge management the way we are doing. And is, are there many other ways to, to do it? Now, over the past uh, months, uh, we have had a lot of different speakers that touch on some creativity aspects. So one of them was Rodolphe, talked about design thinking, which has a, a creativity component to it, and talked about gamification, which also is, is, is very driven by creativity. And I will go back to this. We had Madan and Stuart who talked about storytelling. And uh, you can see the picture of Madan. I don't know if he's here today, but that's a collector, Madan with hairs. There are very few pictures with Madan with hairs. You might want to keep it. Anyway, uh, love you, Madan. Um, so really talking about storytelling. And yes, I mean, storytelling is how do you create the stories that are inspiring and also help people uh, to to embrace this concept and, and I believe there's a lot of creativity behind it. John also mentioned about story thinking uh, a bit in the same idea where creativity can play a role. Balaji talked about user experience. How do you uh, make uh, experience more seamless and, and for people to, uh, uh, I mean, to achieve what they are trying to achieve in, in a very easy way. And again, this requires a lot of creativity. We had Brad, we talked about fluid, fluid decision making. And again, decision making, uh, you have always also the opportunity to, uh, I mean, to be creative or, or, or to challenge what you're doing. Of course, Stephanie uh, talked about radical KM, which is based on uh, a lot on, on also using creativity. Well, on, in using create, creative uh, activities, somehow to deconnect people from what they are doing. And again, for them to look at KM differently. We had Olga and Vadim uh, a few weeks back. We talked about strategic thinking last week, I believe. And again, as part of strategic thinking, I remember seeing a slide with creative thinking being part of it. And, uh, and Saleh also gave a, a great presentation on, on critical thinking uh, that I liked very much. And again, uh, I mean, critical thinking can be what happens be before this creative thinking, depending on how we do it. So we can see that all these topics somehow could be connected or are connected to some extent with creativity. I may have missed other ones. I, I, I apologize. And maybe some other topics will come later on that also emphasize on the need of creativity. But I believe that creativity has a role to play in all of these different topics that were previously uh, previously addressed. Now, uh, a few years back, uh, 10 years ago even, uh, there was this book published by uh, Carla O'Dell who's, uh, and Cindy Huber who are at the American Productivity Quality Consortium. And there is a chapter that talks about how to develop a sharing culture. So they say, well, you need to lead by example. You need to brand KM through messaging, formal communication pushes and reward and cognition. And they say, you need to make KM fun. And, and I think a lot of us 
have not taken on this uh, third recommendation. I mean, the first two ones are, are, are quite uh, are quite known, but Medcam Fund, uh, I've not seen much happening. So we had uh, Rodolf who shared, uh, again, when he was talking about gamification, what they have been doing at AFCONS with this, all these knowledge Olympics. I love the idea and, and they've done a lot of other uh, KM campaign, but by gamifying, yes, you make KM more fun or you make people not realize that they are really doing some KM activity and realize at the same time the value of doing it and slowly change their perception of, of, of KM. Now, uh, this week, and I know Ved is here, uh, this weekend, I think Ved uh, posted also on, on LinkedIn some of the things they have been doing at, uh, at Triance on um, the Triance Knowledge League. Uh, again, again to uh, uh, I mean to help people uh, better understand, realize what what knowledge is available to them in the organization, and I mean you can you can uh, follow the um, the article that um, Ved uh, posted on LinkedIn. It explained much more about it, but also a very great success. And again, it's not just about uh, people learning more about KM or whatever, but they are having fun also engaging into this kind of activity. So a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of KM also efforts have been, pushed, have been put on uh, capturing the past or, or, or trying to reuse the past. And, and, and it's needed. I don't say it's not needed. Best practices, lessons learned, all of these things are, are quite good. But it's also important to look forward. And, 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 and that's what I think is missing a bit in, in the field of KM. How do we don't just look at best practices, but we look at next practices? Uh, yesterday, I think I saw that on, on, on LinkedIn. Again, I'm not going to get into this, but uh, not just looking at feedback, but looking at feed forward. Okay. Again, looking at things in a different way, not just looking at the past, but looking at what's coming up. Not just looking at benchmarking, but looking also at bench learning. Okay. Not just always comparing numbers or, or efficiency or whatever, but learning on how, what we can learn from others in other industries to see how we can be reapply and benefits KM. Looking at how knowledge management, for instance, is gonna play a role uh, in the metaverse. And, and I'm glad that uh, CII in India also was uh, a precursor in, 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 in organizing this conference that happened a few, few months back. For sure. So these are all, I, I'm just giving some example on how there is room for, for creativity and, and innovation that KM could explore. Now, uh, as part of the of the things uh, we do at the at the institute, so we work with the World Bank and and we offer some so, so, some certificate program and and the certificate are based on this uh, knowledge sharing capacity framework, and it just shows that what are the pillars that we believe are necessary for knowledge to succeed. So having a leadership and culture, government skill and IT system, having some financing models, some partnerships, uh, ways to identify and capture knowledge, way to disseminate this knowledge. Uh, way to transfer this knowledge and way to monitor. So, I mean, that's nothing new about this. I, I, I was just using this as a, as a way to, uh, to present how we can look for potentially new ways of doing can, KM. So, in the field of creativity and design thinking, very often we like to frame the problems in starting by in what ways can we, in what ways can be shows that open up like there might not be only one single way to do it and to explore different avenues that potentially can answer a challenge. So let me just pick some of them. Let's say leadership and culture. We know it's required for KM. So in what ways, for instance, can we evolve our culture to a knowledge sharing culture? In what ways can we reduce knowledge hiding and knowledge hoarding in our organization? In what ways can we create a climate of psychological safety since it looks like that's a must. In what way can we better align our KM strategy to our business strategy? In what way can we measure the cost risk of not managing knowledge? So these are just some examples of questions that came out of my mind when I, when I was looking at this particular pillar. But you can do this with all different pillars. Let's say financing. Financing, we rarely talk about it. What are different ways to financially support the KM initiative if there's not directly a, a budget or if there's a li limited budget to it. In what ways can we develop knowledge partnership and create knowledge ecosystems? 
Let me give you an example on this one. Uh, I was working with the World Bank on a, on a project in Uganda with the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Fisheries. Uh, they wanted to capture um, lessons learned and expertise and, and uh, know-how from farmers in all over Uganda. But they didn't have the resources to do that. So what we did, we uh, decided to partner with a university, Makarere University in Uganda, with the Department of Journalism. And uh, students, as part of their activity, now were required to uh, go and interview some farmers and to capture uh, some of the things they do, what works, what doesn't work, uh, by, by using simple video recording or, or, or things like this. So, so it didn't cost almost anything for, for the Ministry of Agriculture to be able to capture all of this knowledge. It was a good exercise for students because in journalism, that's part of what they do, right? I mean, uh, collecting stories, capturing stories, understanding things. And at the same time, it helped to populate a, a, a very large repositories of, of lessons learned from different farmers on different things that could be reused. So just to give you an example that there are always ways and, and particularly, when you have no budget, I think when you add constraints, uh, a creativity usually flows much more than when you have unlimited budgets. Uh, so same thing, we could look at uh, how to uh, capture knowledge in different way. How can new technologies like uh, the metaverse of virtual reality or uh, augmented reality can help to better capture some of this uh, tacit knowledge that we cannot explain by words and, and, and so on. So I'm not gonna go over all of this, but I just say that why don't we take the time, or we should take the time to try to rethink a bit more uh, what we do and how we do it and how we could do it differently and not just uh, dupli replicating what we are doing. Now, just on, on one aspect, let's say on knowledge sharing, how could we combine different knowledge sharing activities to transfer knowledge? So for instance, as part of the um, things we do at the, with the World Bank certificate, we present all kinds of activities that can lead to knowledge sharing and knowledge transfer. And, and, and what we say, and I will share this document with you with all of them detailed and, and so on. And what we say is that, well, depending what kind of knowledge you wanna share and how, with who you wanna share it and how much time you have and how much budget you have, then you can combine these different type of knowledge sharing activities uh, in a way to, to get to where you Want to go. So it's not that always you should have a, a brainstorming session or you should have a, a knowledge cafe or whatever. There are lots of other approach and techniques that can be used and that can lead to some valuable uh, output. Now, when we talk about creativity, it's not just about coming up with ideas, right? Uh, it's There is a kind of a process behind it. And I like this uh, representation of the four hearts of creativity. The four hearts, uh, the first heart is about uh, what we call the explorer heart. The explorer heart is that before even trying to find ideas on how to solve your challenges, is really to understand your challenge or your problem. So to dig, to understand your problem through different lenses. So later on, you're better prepared to ideate about it. Then you can wear the artist hat. The artist hat, that's where really you ideate and you find hundreds of potential solutions to do it. Then once you have all these solutions, you need to wear the judge hat, where you need to narrow down potentially the ideas that you believe are the most uh, potential to, to succeed. And then at the end, you wear the warrior hat. That's really when you're going to have to make it happen, right? That's when you're going to face a lot of difficulties and people also not always uh, supporting you in achieving this goal. So the first five phase is more about diverging, coming up with a lot of ideas. And the second phase is more about converging. So Creativity is about really about this part. I mean, the, the last part, the wire hat, is more about getting into innovation and turning these ideas into really new product or new services or, or new business model. But the first three hats are really at the core of creativity. Now, I, I was delighted. I don't know if Sally is here, but uh, when Sally talked about critical thinking, he, said also, he used a similar approach. Look at your KM outputs, look at your KM events, look at, look at your KM processes, look at your KM decision, look at your connection, look at your expertise and, and question it, question it through a critical thinking lens. But I will say also once you have looked at them through a critical thinking lens, look at them also through a creativity, creativity lens. 
and ask also this question in what ways can we get do KM differently when it comes to events, to output, to processes. And again, keeping in mind that we need solutions that are new, surprising, and at the same time that bring, that bring value. Now, how do you go about this? And how do you look at KM for different lenses? So I, I will just share rapidly because we don't have time, uh, two simple tools, but that I like very much. And some of you might be aware of them. The first one is a scamper tool. And the scamper tool, so each initial uh, is associated with a type of way of looking at your, problem, at your problem, so substitute, combine, adapt, modify, blah, 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 blah. So let me just go over each of them. So substitute. So let's say you're looking at a KM process that you have in place. Then question it. Can I replace or change any part of this process? Can I replace someone involved in this process? Can the rules, can the rules be changed? Can I change uh, its name? Can I substitute one part with another? I mean, these are just a set of very simple questions, but that really helps you trigger your, 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 your brain in saying, okay, how can we do things differently? And, and if you don't ask yourself this question, it would be very difficult to come up with, with creative solutions. So like I said, you have substitute, combine, adapt, magnify, put to other use, eliminate, rearrange, reverse. And all of these questions really will open up maybe a new uh, set of ideas that you may have never thought about and that suddenly uh, appear to you because you are forcing uh, yourself to answer to this question. And some of them might seem very strange or not really applicable to what you're doing, but still force your brain to come up with an answer, even if the answer seems stupid at the first sight. Now, another uh, tool in creativity tools that I like, which is called the uh, what if question. And uh, there is a guide also that I will share with you that has 100 what if questions that you can ask yourself. What if, um, uh, what if, uh, let me just pick one. Uh, what if it was bigger? What if it was smaller? What if, what, what, what if it was thicker? Again, sometimes it's not directly related to what you're doing. You can pick one randomly and, and again, force yourself to, to make this linkage between something which might not be directly related to KM or to what you're trying to do and this question. And, and sometimes really some novel things will come out of it. And so there are 100 of them. And for each of them, I just took one as an example. What if it was adjustable? Okay, so what if knowledge was adjustable? And I believe knowledge management needs to be adjustable, maybe being able to answer or provide uh, answers or knowledge to different people in a different way. So how do we make uh, this knowledge solutions, for instance, adjustable or these knowledge assets adjustable or, or whatever, okay? So these are just some simple tools, okay? Which, uh, I mean, even so you believe they are too basic or whatever, really helps you to open up to a lot of different uh, solutions. So we can see that creativity is really about, okay, questioning what we are doing as we are doing it and opening up potentially to new ways or rethinking new ways of doing it. Now, how can KM support creativity? So it's a bit of the chicken and the egg question. What comes first? Is it creativity or knowledge or... or, or uh, how, how do we deal with that? So I go back to a, maybe a bit more elaborate version of the definition of creativity that may help us answer this question. Creativity is a connecting and rearranging of knowledge uh -huh, in the minds of people who allow them to think flexibly, to generate new, often surprising ideas that others judge to be useful. So, I mean, the last part of the definition is the same as we've seen before. Fortunately, and, and it talks about rearranging of knowledge. So it looks like knowledge has to be there is a requirement for creativity to be happening. So if we look back into uh, what people have said, creativity is just about connecting things. Um, and if we look back into these diagrams that you have seen uh, 1000 times uh, through social media, information being in not connected pieces of, uh, of data put in a particular context, knowledge, linking this piece of information in a meaningful way so they can be acted upon, and creativity really reframing, rearranging this knowledge in a novel way. So this knowledge could have been reorganized as a cat, as a plane, as a house. It's up to you to, uh, to reuse these ingredients more or less 
in a particular way to make it turn it into something new. And, and we can see again through the definition and through this visualization that creativity don't come out of nowhere. Creativity come based on previously uh, no knowledge or experiences or, or things that you have. And I will highly encourage you if you have time to go to, to look at this series of documentary, which is called Everything is a Remix. You can uh, Google it. And there are lots of, uh, they explain to you, I mean, that again, most of the, uh, I mean, 99% of all the uh, discoveries, big discoveries that happen over, over, over the centuries were built on pre-existing pieces of knowledge or, or, or technologies that pre-existed and someone had the bright idea to somehow assemble them or remix them or rearrange them in a certain way to lead to some uh, and to make a big difference. So just to give you an example, again, an ex uh, something I like to, uh, an example I like to use is let's think about how could you get the water out of this glass without touching the glass. Think about how you could get this water out of the glass without touching the glass, right? So, I mean, if we have time and we let people think about it, people come with five, six, seven different ways, let's say maximum 10 ways to, to, to make it happen. Now, if you use uh, proper knowledge management, uh, and uh, you will find out that, in fact, there are 45 different ways or techniques that could be used to take this water out of the glass, to move liquid out of a glass, right? So, again, so you can use, you can use your brain in trying to find solutions, but there is some limits to it. There's some limits of, of what we know, even as a team. And, and, and if we don't systematically, or if you don't have the uh, mechanics or, or, or the systems to be able to know what is known elsewhere, then we might be missing a lot of opportunities to, uh, to be more efficient or, or to find novel ways to solve problems. This is just an example to show where knowledge management, for instance, could play a role here, for instance, in mining some, uh, um, um, in uh, mining some, uh, how do you call that when you, uh, um, sorry, I'm lost, losing the, the word, uh, it's gonna come back to me. Uh, when you make, um, you, uh, when you file a patent, sorry. So f uh, when you mine some patent databases, you can, for instance, extract such kind of, of technical knowledge and find the patent of ideas that could be used potentially to solve your challenge. Now, so, we should not ignore the past. I don't say we should ignore the past. And we could see that a lot of innovation is ba based on, on, the, on the past. So we build on the shoulder of, of our gi of giants. Uh, and these shoulders here, the analogy is previously, I mean, knowledge that we possess in-house or outside the organization. So yes, the future or innovation rely in, in the past. And that's why it's important to that knowledge, that's why knowledge management plays uh, an important role in creativity and innovation. So we need to be able to exploit the past knowledge, which is critical, but we need also, we don't need to stay focused just on the past. We need also to explore uh, new knowledge that, uh, that is created every day. And, and, uh, and that's what we call organizational ambidexterity, being able to exploit what we know and e explore also what's out there. And that's part of knowledge management. And that's unfortunately over the, I mean, in past knowledge management initiative, not being really put on the spotlight and, and being more on, on, on the back seats than, than anything else. But I believe that it has a big role to play in the future. So, See, I have still five more minutes. Let me, uh, I'm almost done. So uh, knowledge creation, yes, is a formulation of new ideas. This knowledge creation happens because knowledge flows. And so Nonaka was one of the first one to say knowledge has to flow and through this uh, various conversion from tacit to explicit and, and so on, uh, then creativity and innovative solution can, can emerge. So knowledge needs to flow at different level in the organization. It can flow from teams to communities of practices to social networks, but it can flow also the other way around from social network back to communities of practice, back to work teams. And again, all this flow of knowledge really help 
creativity and new solution to be uh, to be happening. If knowledge does not flow, then for sure creativity will not will not be happening. So I encourage you to read this uh, uh, this post from Josh, uh, which is great. That explains a little bit how flows of knowledge from again in and out the organization can lead to, to creativity. Now I will end with these uh, six managerial practices affecting creativity by uh, uh, Teresa Amabile, which is an old article, but I think it's still very, very relevant. She said you need to challenge your, uh, your people, not just give them tasks that are too easy to, for, for them, not give them tasks that are too difficult for them, but find the sweet spot so people go outside of their comfort zone and find look for new ways to do that. You need to give them some certain level of freedom to explore ways to do it. You just tell them, I want you to go on top of the hill, but don't tell them which path to take. Let them explore different paths as long as they reach the top of the hill. You need to give them resources to be able to explore and, and, and to try new things. Of course, you need to uh, encourage uh, work team and, and team to creatively find solution, not just individual to do that. You need to recognize them and potentially reward them to, to uh, I mean, once they fail, for instance, and uh, we should uh, highly, and you have companies that uh, reward failure uh, in, 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 a, in a strong way. And you have also to get the organizational support overall that, yes, we want people to try new things, to learn, uh, not to fail, but to learn. And uh, failure is, is a source of learning. So, yes, managing knowledge is, is, is critical. And when you have the raw material, yeah, it's up to you or it's up to your team to, to see how they can best use it, how they can more creatively engage it to it so they can turn it into uh, creative and innovative solution. So if I had a, a book to recommend when it comes about creative techniques, and again, creativity techniques are not just uh, the solution. I mean, it's part of the solution, but if you don't have this, this book, this is really a, like the Bible of uh, creativity tools, a lot of different tools and techniques that helps you to, uh, that helps your, your brain to think differently, that force your brain to think differently. And that's why I believe creativity is all about. And that's it for today. Uh, hopefully this, uh, I, there's a lot I wanted to share, but really at, at the end of the day, I wish we could better, more, more we could challenge more OKM practices and we are currently doing them and creativity can help to, uh, to achieve this goal. Thank you. And as you promised, it will be also fun. Yes, it should be as, as much as possible. Yes, we have a question from Phil is, is waving. Does Phil has a question or you're just waving? Okay. Any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, I really enjoyed it, not only learned. And see you all next week. Uh, Arthur will be joining us from Australia and we're going to speak about uh, being more adaptable. So think about it and you can eat as much as you want because we've got to be adaptive and adaptable and we're going to be very, very slim after we uh, meet him in any dimension we want. Thank you all and have a great day, great KM day, night, whatever it is. Bye. Thank you, guys. See you soon. Thank bye you, Vincent. Bye. bye. Be creative. Be creative. Be creative. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Vincent. Be creative. <laughs> Thank you, Vincent. I Thank joined you. in the last 20 minutes. Thanks. Bye. Okay, Rodolf. Great to see you. Did you yeah, see yeah, yourself? Yeah. Or... No, no, no. I came no, in the last 15 uh, minutes or so. Okay. But, you but miss yourself. And uh, Don't worry. Yeah. But I, I did mention Ved and, and, and you. And uh, I, I mean... I mean, you're really the few uh, really organizations that I've seen have um, really dedicated a lot of effort to to gamify things, and, uh, and 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 I think that's that's part of the solution, really. So I really applaud your your efforts because they are. Thank you, uh, thank you. Yes, I really yeah. appreciate that. And uh, yeah, wonderful. Okay, well, wonderful. see you guys okay. very soon. Bye. Okay. Thanks, bye -bye. Maria. Bye. Bye. Thank session. you. Bye. Yeah, thank you.